Number one Iron Age booty daddy. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Iron Age Nights. Sorry, that was a terrible intro. I didn't have my button set up. I was making sure the stream was like, hey, what's going on, everybody? <laughs> oh, man. I think I have nailed at least 50% of the landings on this show since we have started. And I that, felt like... Generous, I think. Yeah, I, well, you know, <laughs> the, generously in the beginning. Nowadays, it's just like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> it's like, yeah, be all right. The chat knows. The chat knows. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Iron Age Nights, a show that I don't think any of us thought would have continued much longer than a couple months, and yet here we are almost a half a year later, over a half a year later. This is episode 42. I think it's episode 42. If it's not episode 42, you really need to let me know so I can change the title. Pretty sure it's episode 42. <laughs> Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a long few days for me, so I need this. I need this like an alcoholic needs. Hey, beer. <laughs> oh, what was I saying? That. I'll drink to that. <laughs> oh, really man. Which I won't drink to at this point. <laughs> I turned... Yeah, that's right. I turned uh, Daniel P. Riley into an alcoholic. That's never on Friday. That's all. Yeah. Okay. I, yes, Brian. I'm wearing your shirt because your fun my comic was supposed to go off, <laughs> but it's having technical difficulties. Wow, Brian oh, does dear. have technical difficulties. That's that's how he do. So that is that is in fact how he do. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here. Let's say hello to the chats. Uh, and then introduce my fantastic co-host and then our awesome guest. So over on Rubble, we got 10 Cage. What's going on? Brian McCop and how are you doing good, sir? Chat Sue's over there on Rumble Sword. Rush, what's going on, man? John A. Douglas, how are you doing? Betty Adams, hello, how are, oh Betty Adams, get away from those degenerates. Don't, don't <laughs> just 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 maintain your six feet. Like that's that's about the only thing that I want to I want to come back from like the lockdown crap is like the six feet like in supermarket lines. It was so nice being like supermarket lines and gas station lines and people aren't like breathing on your neck. Ah, oh, oh, it was great. That's the only thing I want to keep. That just just that's the only thing I want to keep. But yeah, Redoubt Productions is over there on Rumble. How are you doing? <laughs> Gar Gar Garham Garham, how are you? What the hell kind of a name is that? He's a uh, he's a frequent contributor to the prompts over on Iron Age Media. Oh, that explains it. Okay, that yeah. explains the name. Yeah. yeah, I get it now. It's okay. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> over on YouTube, we've got AS Burner. What's going on, man? Betty Adams over analysis, double dipping, ma'am. 
see how you are. Horizon Tucker, how are you doing? 10 cage, also double dipping. Uh, the double dip is when you are in more than one chat at mm -hmm. one time, which makes you almost as crazy as me. Redoubt Productions, also double dipping. How are you doing, good sir? Eric Grant, how are you doing? Swift Sword Rush, what's going on? Evely Music, how are you doing? Brian McCop and double dipping. <laughs> uh, Country Cooking, 45, hi. Hello, Country Cooking, how are you? What are you cooking? Because I got a smoker that I just built. And I, <laughs> gonna, yeah. Anyway, we won't talk about that. I keep I keep telling myself, I'm like, I won't talk about it until Sunday coffee. I won't talk about it until Sunday coffee. They were trying to get me to talk about it on Wednesday night. Or they were just saying random stuff, and I was bringing it back to my smoker. But I maintain they were trying to get me to talk about my smoker. And that's, and I won't let that go. John A. Douglas, what's going on? You're down in YouTube as well. Periopsis Press, how are you doing? Frederick Weebot, what's going on? Good, sir. Anthony, Rhonda, Nelly, how are you? Uh, oh, wait, which one did I say hello to? Eric Grant or Eric Wag? Both of you Erics. Hello, how are you? I, the, the Erics are, that's, that's weird seeing both of your names together. It's just don't do that anymore. Iron Age, beat it, sir. <laughs> you're a host. You're you're a freaking co and you're and you're mixing with the ch Oh my god, don't let them touch well, you. Don't you know. don't let them touch you. You don't understand. Just it's, you got to you got to go down with the peasants to make sure that, they Oh, it's so phrasing, sir. Right? Phrasing. <laughs> don't go down on the peasants, Richard. Yeah. Black Dragon Comics, what's going on? Uh, Rose, my my lovely wife. Says, so many nerds, so little time. What are you planning on? Ben? Anyway, yeah, <laughs> I will roast. Us peppers. I will. No, the fuck she won't. Absolutely not. No, I bar that this year. That's not a thing. No. no. They, dude, <laughs> the peppers aren't coming peppers. in. The peppers aren't coming in good this year. It's weird. <clears throat> like, she made, she made a fin. Fantastic freaking marinara sauce that she's gonna jar. She had me taste it. Oh, dude, oof, oof, all fresh tomatoes and everything from the garden. It was fantastic. The ultimate kahuna for a dollar ninety nine says, Wow, it's time for Iron Age Nights to get mooned. Woo, no, oh man, it is kahuna. It is kahuna. That's that is for sure. Guilty Gearhead, how are you doing, man? Iron Age Marketing, good sir. How are you doing? JVP Music, what's going on? JVP. All right. First round of jalapeno powder was just made. Uh, 20 peppers, enough, only for half a shaker, just to give an idea of how much it takes. Yeah, it actually takes a lot to make. It, it does. That is That is the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for being here. And I JVP, or wait, no, the ultimate kahuna. Why did I say JVP? I don't know. I'm tired, ladies and gentlemen. The ultimate kahuna, thank you so much for the $1.99 super chat, if I did not say that. And ladies and gentlemen, it is time to welcome the man who had to send me an extra book just <laughs> to meme me. And, and, and to be perfectly honest, it's like, it was, it was awesome. I'm not gonna lie, but he it, he inadvertently gave me a special collector's edition <laughs> that nobody else has but me. And so, ladies and gentlemen, for the man who's for the ma the ma'am, oh. the man who sent the meme <laughs> that yes, turned ma into a collector. Yes, ma'am, who sent the ma meme that turned into a collector's edition. Richard Iron Age Media, man, how are you doing, man? How's your last week been? Uh, overall, good. I uh, I realized that. Uh, once again, man, I, I the, the fulfillment is like I feel like I'm it, it's Tom and Jerry or something like that where I'm I'm like I've I've won I've got it this time and then like an anvil another anvil falls on my head or something oh, like no. that yeah and because I, I somebody was like I I got my my tracking number but I it it shows that it hasn't been uh, doing anything and I'm like what that's odd that that should be impossible and then I looked and I was like oh no <laughs> oh no <laughs> oh oh strip of uh labels got dropped and so as a result oh, no. i never uh packed them and yeah anyway it's just been it, it's it's like one little <laughs> one little it's like a it's like chinese water torture with this thing but uh, oh, no. uh yeah issue number two i'm i'm going to be printing it early i'm gonna pack it uh, everything is gonna be all nice and labeled and then hopefully the day will come and it, it will i'll just you know 
uh, do a clip a this single clip, gigantic clip, drop clip off everything he just office. said right I know, now. That's what I'm hoping. Clip I'm dreaming probably clip. won't happen. <laughs> so this is what I'm hoping for. Trippy, we need that clip and it needs to be called Richard Wishful Thinking. Yeah, Wishful Thinking, <laughs> yes. Well, I, this time I made the campaigns much simpler in terms of, of uh, how many options people had on things. So that should oh, uh, man. definitely streamline things. But everything's going great. The campaign passed uh, the 4K mark between Indiegogo and Fun My Comic and over 100 backers. Uh, and it continues to oh. climb. Uh, oh, it, really quickly. Hey, my love, um, we, we have to spend money on, mm -hmm. on Rich, but it's on Richard. It's okay. <laughs> he's, he's over. He's, he's right there. He's We got it. Mm, that's a weird angle that. right right there <laughs> there we go we have to spend money on rich that is a win. strange angle <laughs> but uh, she's she she looks at me and she's like really no. all of the money we're spending on <laughs> the smoker that you're to. building i mean you i don't ever have to i don't but no because i don't want you I sending know, me know, free I shit because i know you will anyway but i don't like i actually want to put my money where my mouth is and i don't get to do that very often so it's awesome because you don't have any <laughs> I spent it all on a smoker, okay? A cheap smoker. No, it, nothing. Nothing's cheaper. Ooh. Nothing more expensive than. Uh, I actually know he, right. He's you not. What I mean? Wrong. He like it's a cheap smoker, but yeah, not I, cheap. As in like it is cheap. As in like you got. I don't know, dude. You see cheap. some of the welds on this thing. It's it's pretty cheap. <laughs> like, cheap it's, it's, it's my exactly. It's mine though. I had the kids mm -hmm. bring some stuff home and they're like, Dad, what could we use this stuff for? And I'm like, I know exactly what we saw. My my doorstop, I had a totally different design in mind. You got your kids out in the neighborhood ripping things out of people. <laughs> out from um, under people's uh, crotches. Okay, you know, uh, I can neither confirm <laughs> nor deny that my children may or may not have acted of their own volition or on my <laughs> command to bring things home. I can't confirm nor deny any of those things. Hey, Walking Dad, around with we, bolt uh, cutters and still... hacksaws. Hey, Dad, um, we stole like uh, 10 bars of rebar from the construction site down the road. Dude, re no, I, I actually deliberately have avoided rebar. I thought about it. I thought about yeah, some rebar, but I, hey, that stuff gets a little hard. That gets, to, and not only that, but just rebar to weld. Ugh, the fumes from that stuff is gnarly. They sneak That's because of LA. Copper tubing. To answer that, Evelyn, um, this camera probably is from like 1993. I'm not really sure. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it's retro good sir that's what you call yeah, got, it it's retro i've actually i've got like three cameras technically one isn't hooked up but i've got a camera from 1994 uh up above um right now pointed at my soundboard and then um this canon camera from who knows when and then a sony another sony digital camera so mm. all all analog so yeah that, you uh, basically nailed it <laughs> live awesome. from that's actually really cool i I didn't realize that I was going to hate our guest like with a deep passion <laughs> in the beginning of the show. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, there's another guy here that I have to introduce into the show as well. Uh, and he's the guy that loves to go in, touch your brain, caress your brain ever so gently. And pull that story out like a guy trying to rip out a catalytic converter on a car. I don't know. I don't know why I said that. It's 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 Daniel. We all know him. He's whimsyland.org. He's going to help you write your story. That was a terrible analogy. I I think I had an aneurysm. I'm sorry, Daniel. I tried. <laughs> sorry, and I'm laughing. It's fine. <laughs> but I was like, what the, where the fuck is he going with I this? I don't one? know. I I'm going to be honest. I lost it halfway through and I'm like, I don't What do people rip out? Catalytic converter because that's a thing that I've actually known to happen to people and I'm like, Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, it happened to me yeah. against my will. Oh, yeah. See, you get it. You get the joke. <laughs> anyway, I have Daniel. The element, they stole my catalytic converter in a parking lot one night. Oh, God. Yeah. That's awesome. awesome. It doesn't take much. <laughs> nope. It really doesn't. They're very, very easy. Anyway. An asshole with a, <laughs> a sawzaw and a skateboard could do it. Hey, 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 no, we don't need to be attacking me like that. Oh, what? <laughs> anyway. Um, so it's your fault. Maybe. I got good money from it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fine. As long as you got good money from it. <laughs> oh, Daniel, how are you doing, man? How's your last week been? I'm doing well. Uh, not much to report. I've been working on a bunch of client projects, books that I am very excited 
to see come out in the next couple of months. Great there stuff. Yeah. There you go. That's awesome. Man, I am mentally tapped. This is not good. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I get to introduce somebody who's been requested on the show for many months now. Uh, this guy has been requested on the show basically since we covered him on the Wednesday night live stream several months back. We got to watch the short animated film that he did for his project. Um, all of us were absolutely enamored by the way that he could color things by the darkness of the story, yet the hopefulness of the story as well, if I remember correctly. Uh, and something that really just intrigued all of us as something we'd never seen before. And so I'll, it is my very, very humble honor to welcome to the show the animated moon good sir how are you doing i'm doing just fine i'm um been kind of tired since the last release so i've been taking a bit, uh, bit easy but uh, it's been nice um as a quick uh quick announcement here to start i've been told by uh, certain members of the uh, gilded and completely unrelated i'm hoping that trippy's sitting in here and so you can see this um but for those of you watching if you go over to my store um i've got a coupon have a drink use to uh to buy something that'll be five percent off your order i've been told my shilling skills aren't that great so hey there you go <laughs> you're in hey, good company <laughs> i know people like that i know people like that and that is over on the animated and it's seriously me. have a drink you you did the have a drink that's have freaking. a drink no spaces just uh, all caps have a drink and that'll be good until uh, I think Monday. So the the VOD people, you can uh, get on that. As well. That is nice. freaking cool. Better That's than me. Awesome. I so, I man, there there are many many questions to ask, and ultimately the first one is always relatively the same because I feel like it's the most interesting question. What got you into, and now, I mean, you've done minor animation, you're, you're doing, uh, you're doing your web comic, your story, where does that all start for you? Were, were you young? Were you old? What, who inspired you? Where does this journey begin? Oh boy, do we have uh, 15 hours? Let's, uh, let's, let's see. go. <laughs> yeah, um, I'll do so, it. I mean, so I got I, a smoker to build, but I'll do it. Yeah. Um, well, so I, I would say that I definitely did start young. Um, I started, really, I started with writing first. I wanted to be a writer um, when I was like 11 years old. I actually distinctly remember the night I basically figured out what I was going to do. And I was I was laying there and I was going into middle school. And so I'm like, oh, I'm, you know, becoming older and all this kind of stuff. You know, you think, you think you're all that when you're that age. Um, but I get to thinking, I'm like, well, what do I want to do? Like, what do I actually enjoy doing, right? You start asking those questions around that age. And I realized at the moment, I was like, wait a minute. I really like writing. I like writing stories. Like, that was always the thing that I wanted to do all the time in, like, assignments and stuff like that. And so I got to thinking, I was sitting there, and I'm like, I don't need a school assignment to tell me to write a story, basically, right? I don't, I don't need that. I can just do it. And mm -hmm. so that just immediately ignited my brain like it was just like it, it was like any kind of limitation was like gone so everything i watched from that point on and everything i listened to especially music in particular was really inspiring jethro Tull, peter gabriel rush you know that was a lot of what i was listening Ooh. to and um Ooh. and so it was just this just blender of, of stuff and it was all garbage right because you're 11 years old and you don't know what you're doing um but that just was circulating in my head and I actually started writing a story um, and I had a blast writing it and I got about 120 pages in and that's when I kind of started to slow down. I was getting into high school and I put it aside and I fell into this sort of limbo where I wasn't really sure what to do. And then what I kind of discovered as I was going through high school was there was so much I wanted to do that I was having a difficult time presenting as 
story, right, as, as a written story. Mm -hmm. And so my brother had been getting into drawing and I was really inspired by that. So he was actually a big one who kind of inspired me as far as getting into drawing goes. But he was more the comic book side himself, kind of ironically, actually, now that I think about it. Um, so I was like, well, what can I do that's a little bit different? What can I do that, um, that would kind of give a unique experience? And that was animation, um, especially considering you could do stuff with music and animation. You could do voice acting. There, it was it, like it had no limitation to it. So that was really appealing to me. The only limitation is just it takes a long freaking time, right? Mm -hmm. um and so when i started getting into animation i made my first animated film when i was still in high school as my senior year um my multimedia teacher was the the one who actually really encouraged me he's like hey can you do a film we're, we're having this film festival that's and I'm like, cool yeah I probably we have about six months before it happens um so i buckled down i was like i'm gonna tell a short little story it's it's still up on youtube actually um it's called in the court of the south moon um, very basic compared to what I've done. Um, but I will say as a bit of trivia, I did all the voice work, both of the characters in one take, and I'm still pretty happy about that. Um, that is, that's a skill and a half <laughs> to do, to do any block. sort of voice work yeah. or recording in one take and be happy with it as somebody who like, I now I do YouTube videos at least once a week. I didn't even do this week's video in one take. Mm -hmm. Like it was two or three takes and I nixed, but dude, and anytime you get it in one take, absolutely be proud of that. Yeah. No. So I do that. I get the, I get everything done. I do. I got to do some uh, sound design as well. Um, I was using like, I was upstairs recording stuff with like an egg beater and like, of bass strings and stuff like that to get certain sounds. And one oh, you actually did one. prop sound work. Yep. I did, I did. Dude, that is yeah. so awesome. I actually, I did the sound design as well. I worked really close with a good friend of mine for the sound design on the Blind King film. Super mm -hmm. fun. I, it's it's the way I prefer to do it because it, it just gets such a more precise sound. Um, That's, oh, I love practical sound work like that. Oh, yeah. So it, what, it's super fun. As far as like your setup for that goes, I mean, are you, obviously you have some retro equipment with the uh with your cameras and everything else like mm -hmm. you were talking i mean is is this all are you kind of going for that more retro feel when you're doing this thing or um there, there's or, a little or is bit that, of that is that just kind of like a just the way it happened or is that it, intentional? It, it, it's it's it, it's sort of circumstantial because like basically you know growing up my dad always had this junk just laying around right Mm -hmm. And so there was always kind of a mystique around old equipment that's archaic. There's sort of this, it's, mm -hmm. it's this mystery box, right? It was used for something at some point, but now it's been completely forgotten. And yeah. I think what's kind of interesting is growing up, I, I obviously I grew up in the 2000s. And the 2000s were an interesting time where everything was still kind of experimental. Every Like, mm -hmm. like nowadays, mm -hmm. everything's so designed, everything's so streamlined. Um, mm -hmm. But back then, you did have a closer connection to this older technology, but it was still archaic, right? Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, like, I think, um, I don't think it's impossible for people to get into it. Um, I didn't really start getting into the older tech stuff until I was older and I could actually, like, figure it out and put some time in and had a reason to. Um, but, like, uh, the first thing I kind of got into was cassette tapes because it was like, well, these things are like 60 cents a pop or something like that. It's, it's yeah. a fun hobby to kind of play around with and get into tape and whatnot. Um, and it just kind of grew from there. I started collecting old TVs and stuff like that. And actually, um, I can't really show it, unfortunately, but I have a FM transmitter that transmits from my computer over the air so I can pick stuff up on Channel 4. On my oh, cool. And for the, anybody what complaining, the don't worry, it's it's not like i'm sending this like i'm not broadcasting this miles out or anything like that it's all just local it's very local um i you know i'm not elon musk i actually am afraid of the fcc but um <laughs> <laughs> but um yeah it, it so basically every tv you can see there's actually um back there that that little monitor there that's actually a tv it's, it's actually analog um that can pick it up there's another little tv back there um i say it burnt out um, yeah, that burnt out. I got to open it up. It's, it's a cheap one, unfortunately, um, black and white, but I got other TV so I, I can just like transmit stuff, right? It's not HD, but 
who cares you know it's 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 remote tv it's 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 awesome it's it's great in and of itself um so it, it i just my whole premise is use the best of every decade like like this stuff works right this this all of this equipment it still can function given the right mm -hmm. environment you don't need it's not like modern technology where if you don't have the drivers that's it right yeah um yeah I've had stuff like that come up. So anal that's why I actually really like analog. That's why the, the board, I, and actually I, I can show you. Here. Wait, do you have an analog board? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's what oh! it is right there. <laughs> um, so you can see actually, also okay. So one of the things that I have wanted to do with my sound setup, um, I have my, my dream sound setup is to go completely analog. Completely analog with a digital plugin because yep. analog you if there's a failure, you know exactly where that failure is. Yeah, it's, it's a lot it, more like it, and it's it's all done in a chain. And a lot of people get confused when you start talking about chaining different audio effects together and mm -hmm. compressions and reverbs. But you can master your sound before it ever goes into an output. Yep. And I, it's something that I've, I've been around, I've worked around, and I love it. I love having the ability. But, I mean, even for a lot of that, we're still talking multiple thousands of dollars. You'd be surprised. Um, Has it come down? Well, let me put it this way. Uh-oh. Basically, all of what you see back here is stuff that people have just gotten rid of. They don't want it anymore. And the same goes for that board. Okay. So so you've kind of gotten lucky in some of that because I've looked. There is and a little bit of that. Yeah. I've tried. And when you find guys that know what they're sitting on, and, and that, that's just always been my luck because I, I meet people who know that they're sitting on some gold tier stuff. Yeah, yeah. And that's like, uh, and they're like, yeah, you know, I it, it, it's going to cost you like $700 because they don't make it anymore. And I bought it for two fifty dollars back in the 70s. It's like, you son of a <laughs> Which, in like modern day game. dollars, it would be about that much. And they don't make it anymore. And it's built like a tank. And it still works. And it's in almost perfect condition. Like, I, I've always gotten screwed on deals like that. But, man, dude, if I if I could get the analog stuff going, I, I, I would. I absolutely would. My entire sound set, this wall back here wouldn't be the nerd stuff. It would be all <laughs> the audio stuff that I would love to, because you it, you know doing all that old school, oh man, I love that stuff, man. So good. Yeah. Well, I, I will say that part of what kind of makes it work is that I, you know, I'm not looking for anything specific. In fact, and the other thing is like this, this is an old Mackie. It's a 24 channel 8 bus Mackie. Oh. And. Um, I've got a, I, I've got a little, uh, uh, I think it's a four channel Mackie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mackies they're, are they're, good, dude. Especially the old ones, man. They're great. And like a friend of mine, a good friend, the, the sound designer friend of mine, um, he was even saying they're like, they're built to last, but mm -hmm. with this specific Mackie, unfortunately, that's like the one exception to the rule because apparently they cheapened out on the ribbon cables. Oh so no. The, the, the ox ends unfortunately went out and some of the channels are really flaky and Oh no! So after this my, interview, I'm I'm gonna actually be like next few days tearing this my, whole thing down. My my <laughs> Mackie went out because it got dragged through my house by a bloodhound. Mm. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. So it was. That's why I upgraded my audio is because I was running through a Behringer and a Mackie mm -hmm. uh, simultaneously. So not only I could have audio money, it was yeah, it was. But no, Mackies outside of letting them get dragged through your house by a bloodhound and whatever thing that you have that's apparently not a Mackie. Yeah. Ma Mackie equipment, especially if you can find the old school Mackie equipment and then just source it into a USB output, like you mm -hmm. cannot go wrong with that stuff. Yeah, so what I have, I have a running through a, what's called a PreSonus uh, AI. I, yep, IO I know exactly what PreSonus is. Yep. 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 I yeah, did I not it. realize we were going to get into this conversation. <laughs> Oh, you I, talked to me long enough. That's that's going to happen. Trust oh, me. Oh, dude. I, okay. So so here is where... I, I, oh, man. And as much as I want to continue this conversation for me, I know that a lot of people here on this show are here to listen and hear about your artwork, uh, where you got... We're going to check out uh, your animation, your illustrations that you've done. Like, we're, we're going to get into all that. I want to keep talking about sound work but everybody will leave and then I won't be able to properly shill you. 
Well, and then we'll make it. We'll make it a, a point to uh, come back to that later. Did, did we need. No. Yeah. No. No. We'll de- <laughs> we we definitely need to come back because oh, dude, it's so nice to have somebody who can talk boards and stuff like that. Yeah. And I'm like, I know this thing. Um, Get a wonder, room, boys. I okay, <laughs> sir. Maybe later. Anyway. <laughs> so how all right so you get into the writing you're into the animation obviously you love a lot of the old vintage uh you love a lot of the old analog stuff how do you how how does it go from your high school teacher telling you you should really work on this animation to getting where to it's just this passion of yours well part of that is during high school so before we kind of (laughs) got Uh, we deviated off. Um, hey, basically. you deviated. I just gladly let you. <laughs> fair. No, that's fair. Um, I'm very good at that. You're gonna, you're gonna find out. You're gonna have to keep me on point. But anyway, so. All basically. right, Daniel, um, Richard, you guys are on point tonight. <laughs> me and Moon are gonna have a conversation. So <laughs> you got so, it. Um, so this competition, it's a, this sort of local, this uh, high school film festival and everything like that. And I apply, and I, you know, finish the film. It's in right. And I already knew going in that, like, it was going to be appreciated, basically. So there was, um, it was competition. There was three through first um, place prize, and then there was a grand prize. Um, And so I had no idea what, like, going in exactly what was going to happen. All I knew is that they liked it. And a lot of the other films that were in, basically the whole premise of the, the thing was they wanted to see creative films, like actual, like, film films. A lot of what came in was like more like sponsorship stuff like the, mm. like where i'm at is a big like windsurfing spot so it was a lot of like yeah these kids would film themselves windsurfing or, or whatever and stuff like that and um so mine comes up and it's just like completely different it's like it's the only animated thing it's the only like narrative film thing and i'm just sitting here like oh my gosh this is like straight from left field this is so this is like even i'm just like this is so bizarre you know compared to like what everybody else put in and um and so but as as the night's going on they're they're laying out the prizes and eventually comes grand prize andrew clark here you go you know you win and at that moment i was like this is awesome this is, this is great great response you know people just that appreciation of the art and stuff like that that was the first time i really had that and so i've kind of been um not necessarily chasing that ever since but kind of building on that ever since it's just this presentation of something different and that can be appreciated that's that's what i got after the first time we we saw your work and that Watching that short that you had, I cannot remember what website you had. I don't remember if you had it on a crowdfunding website, but I remember watching it. And I remember there was a a chess game, if I'm not mistaken, because it's been a while. And I remember seeing that. And again, I remember these like solemn, like dark vibes to it. But again, like I said earlier, with this with this air of hopefulness in the undertones, and you could see that in the artwork, and and you could hear that in the background. You could hear that in and it, just tonally, this was something that was different. It wasn't. It's not that. Oh, I've never seen. It's not that I've never seen anything like it before. I've not experienced those combinations of things together before and that was something and i think trippy i think trippy soul was on that live stream with me i believe so and so that was something that really captivated i think all of us i think yours was actually one of the first ones to win the entire night we've only had four of them so far that have everybody has trippy trippy's high down there he doesn't remember um <laughs> but we've only had four trippy not high <laughs> I, well also well he's not high at work um but we've only had allegedly it, it, trippy <laughs> <laughs> but we've only had four that have won the night and yours i believe if i'm not mistaken was one of them and that was actually you you ended up joining the gilded uh, very shortly after that, but 
so you go, you come out with something, it's radically different. It's totally different than what people are used to. Does that at that moment become a part of what you go? I want to be the different guy or were you just like, I'm on to something? What, where, where's your mindset there? Cause there's a two different mindsets. I want to be the different guy or I'm on to something. What's well, I, I think it's sort of one in the same for me because essentially where I'm coming from in, in terms of all of that is I didn't get into a lot of times people get into animation or they get into comics or they get into even writing because it's like, oh, hey, I really liked reading these kinds of books or, or watching this kind of animation and I wanted to become an animator or whatever. Right. And I I can kind of relate to that. Like I, I read books and I enjoyed animation as much as anyone else, you know, Disney and stuff like that, of course. Right. Um, back when we were good. Um, but um, got to throw that little. Well, caveat. <laughs> well, just a little caveat. Okay. Necessary caveat. Yes. Um, but um, what I really started noticing, I was like, well, wait a minute. There are things I'm seeing in my head that I, I don't see anywhere else. Like, where is all of this stuff? Where, where else is it, right? And I think a, a part of that is, um, again, kind of going back to that archaic sort of notion where uh, one of my big inspirations for as far as you want to talk about tone you want to talk about atmosphere that sort of thing is the twilight zone and mm. you know growing up like everybody's like heard of the twilight zone good old rod when, Serling. yeah yeah you've never when seen was, it well oh, when, when i was yeah you are you really should check it out um when i was growing up um it was like i i could mention something like the twilight zone and it's like what's that Right. It's like no one knew what this stuff was. Um, and the same thing, especially with music. It's like King Crimson. Who Who's that? You know, it's this weird band from the started in the 60s, you know, or whatever. It's like, but that was like in my head. That's what was in my head. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just like, there's so much you can do with animation. Why are we like, where is this other stuff? And I have found it. I have found stuff that really kind of every now and again it's very rare it's like this this rare resource that i find that's just like that that and i i, I grab it and i go hey wait a minute hold on this is this can happen this is real right rather than it being this like abundant thing like oh this is how animation is right mm -hmm. um and so when i go into my own work when i when i talk about my inspiration it's not about like finding what was there already it's it's about going well what more can there be how can i bring this stuff this what animation is or whatever into a new place so that it's familiar but different and interesting um i just want to make stuff that's interesting essentially right and i'm not going to do that by doing the eight billion you know comic cape superhero like kind of style right that that just doesn't really click hmm. with me um and so that I guess that's kind of my answer to that is it, it's it's both. I, I know I'm onto something because obviously like people are clicking with it. Like it is intriguing. Um, I don't know when I when I do stuff for the Blind King, I'm like, I hope this works because this is out there. You know, the whole philosophy behind it is so like not my own. Actually, it's actually not as far as the Blind King goes. It's based on another philosophy from another game that no one ever knew until Shadow of the Colossus got picked up and then people kind mm. of retroactively started learning mm. Ico, the game Ico. Um, <laughs> that's another tremendous inspiration. If you look at Ico, you will you will see it's like, oh yeah, the lighting, the weird atmosphere, the, the loneliness, the isolation, all of that stuff is absolutely stuff that I pull from. Um, but the creator of that, um, of Ico, I can never remember his name. I always feel really bad. I thought, I literally thought about looking it up earlier today, but it kind of slipped huh. my mind. Um, the philosophy behind that was something called design by subtraction. Rather than making it more complicated, more world building, more this, that, or the other thing, more flashy, whatever, he stripped things back. It was like, okay, we have three levels planned. Do we need three levels? How about we just stick to the castle, right? And so mm -hmm. that's what the Blind King has been. So it's been entirely, um, entirely experimental. Um, so the fact that it's working is like fantastic <laughs> it's like 
wow, I was not expecting that. I'm really happy that people are, are actually digging it. They're interested in it. It's like, it, it's sort of like, okay, this, this does work. I'm not crazy. It's, it's, um, it, it is something, there is something there basically, right? Yeah, yeah. people are responding to it definitely. Well, and as far as the, um, I think the Blind you King series. Am I muted? No, no I'm oh, muted. Oh, okay. I was going to say, as far as the uh, the Blind King <clears throat> is concerned, how like how long have you been working on the? I know the first chapter was out some time ago, and you've got this second chapter. Um, uh, is is it is that out now? I believe. Yes. Uh, second yeah, I was going to say, I, I think it, it came out. I was trying to remember whether or not I'd gone and read it. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, yeah, I, I was going to say, so how long have, have you been working on this? And how long do you see it like progressing into the future with this particular tale? So um, I first actually, so I first started working on the film. And it's kind of a funny story because I, so when I was in university, before I even went to university, I, I was doing a program for technically, it, technically it was a digital design program with an emphasis in animation. And, um, I told myself, I was like, if I don't make a film during my time here, I will consider my time there a failure. I need to make at least one film. Right. I was expect I was hoping to make more than one film, but it, I won't get into all of that. It was kind of, kind of a scuffed program, but anyway, um, so we come to it's my last year this was 2020 and i for that summer i was basically like you know what because because basically i was looking at there was a short film class i was going to be taking that was not a short film class it was like do a project every three weeks and it's like that's not a short film class right especially for animation yeah and yeah, so like, okay you know what screw it. i'm going to develop a pitch and I'm going to pitch it to my um, professor and I'm going to say, like, let me do this. Either like I'm going to do this film no matter what. Right. Like I was going to make this film happen. Either you're going to make it more difficult on me or you're going to help me out. And so I developed the storyboards around that time. A um, mm -hmm. little bit of help that was actually um, very useful. A friend really helped me to nail down the storyboards. I did the turnarounds. I had everything planned out as far as the designs and stuff like that goes, and just that the general plot of that film. And um, and I pitched it to him, and he and immediately he's like, "Yep, do it. Go for it. I'm going to let you do that," because um, he he knew I would pull it off. And so I that was the first project I did, and essentially this 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 has been such a weird project because it started out I was just going to make it a short film. It was just hmm. going to be that moment in the woods, kind of left up to interpretation, kind of um, ambiguous in that way. Um, and it, it was just such a bizarrely organic process because I got the inspiration for it from a piece of music. It, it wasn't even like a full song. It was, um, if anyone has ever heard of Ichika, it's a super popular Japanese guitarist, um, just shot up in the past few years. Um, he did a um, just a really fascinating piece based on um, the um, uh, this tuning in A B C D E F um, uh, tuning, like all the strings A B C D E F, kind of as a joke. But it was this enchanting piece, and it just resurrects or it, it just forms this image in your head, kind of thing. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Ichiganito. Um, <laughs> music guys in the chat, you understand what he just said, right? <laughs> like A B C D E F tuning, like you, that's not standard at all, right? <laughs> that's that's nowhere. Now I am no stranger to playing with alternate tunings. That one's weird. Yeah, and that's kind of the, that was kind of the point. Basically, he put out like this comment. He was like, "Hey." S send me a, a tuning and I'll play something. I'll, I'll, I'll make a little song out of it or whatever. And the first one was A, B, C, D, E, F as a joke, basically. But he makes this like super just enchanting piece. And I actually reached out to the guy, funny enough, um, years back. I was like, can I use this piece in the, the film? 
and he never got back to me, probably for <laughs> obvious reasons. Um, but I'm actually glad because I, I me and uh, my sound guy got to actually sit down and like compose something, do something original for it, um, which was super fun, um, and and fit way better. But um, basically, so rolling all the way back, I, I, I'm gonna deviate like that a lot, but. Um, Basically, I've been working on it since 2020, like March okay. 2020 is when I started working on the idea, conceptualizing. I have some of the old concept art from that time. I think a lot of it actually is in the art book that's available on my site digitally. You can just go and read it. It's, it's in the same place as the chapters. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, just conceptualizing the character and everything like that. But, but at the time, I had no idea what the story really ultimately was. And so I'm kind of... I've been discovering it as I've been making it at the same time. So, okay, so, it, so you're you're firmly in the uh, discovery writing um, kind of process, or do you I, I do you have say, an end? Do you have like a final? Yes. So, because so some, something you, you, I was going to say earlier, you were saying, and it made me like I was thinking that you had like an ending, sort of that you're working towards. So, um, yeah, basically. Um, Basically, um, I keep that in mind, Trevor. Um, I do have an end in mind, right? How, like, and I, I basically, so, so to answer the other question as far as how long I see this going, so it's been going, I've been working on it for three years. And as a quick side, mm-hmm. I actually, like, this last chapter, there's a panel with her mask being taken off her face. Oh, that yeah, panel yeah. is the last time I'm going to have to draw that mask. Because I've been driving that stupid mask for three years. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, animating that son of a gun was like, oh my gosh, that was so annoying. Um, so I don't have to draw that mask anymore. And that makes me actually kind of happy. But basically, um, so I, I'll, I'll basically straight up say it because um, I've been putting the information out there. Currently, there's two chapters out. I want there to be three more chapters. So chapter three, four, and five um, for the main story that will be released on the site um that will be available just for free right uh and then there will be a chapter six that will basically be an epilogue that will be um that will go along with the hopefully print release hopefully i can make that happen that's the word Um, i was yeah i'm looking forward to that yeah um i was i was i i'm a big proponent of the physical Mm -hmm, because i don't like what a lot of these uh, uh, for lack of a better term, ass hats are doing when it comes to digital releases mm-hmm. and a lot of the digital scrubbings going on. So when I when I hear print release and all that, and keep it in touch, I'll I'll get you in touch with some guys. Okay, that's I, good because I'm gonna need help. <laughs> well, they're all in the gilded, believe it or not. I I you're in the right like you're in the gilded. They're you're in the right spot. All I gotta mm-hmm. do is just get connect you in DMs. Oh yeah, but, no, I'm honestly I've I've been super impressed with just like the way that people can make stuff happen and like it's like okay this is awesome like it's it's great to be connected you know. Um, yeah, that was that was weird for me because <laughs> I literally started the gilded because I was like, wow, well, YouTube people are supposed to have some place to go like a Discord and I was like, sure, I'll do the gilded and I bullied Trippy Soul. And Billy Bob Sack and like I think Ram, and uh, and it's just grown from there. <laughs> mm-hmm. And now we have people networking and writing books together and doing projects together, and uh, yep. and it's just it's it's nuts. Like the the gilded is just absolutely nuts. Um, yes. So that that will be in the future. Hopefully, that that's that's a goal of mine. I would really love to see this uh, in print um, and actually like sold as a as a proper proper book. So, but are you okay if I play this animation reel that you have on your website? Because I want to show some people who haven't seen what you've done and what you're capable of. Because I really, really, and I just want to show it off because it just it looks so fantastic. Go for it. That's what it's there for. All right.
That's so freaking unreal. Alright. Is any of that hand drawn? All of that's hand drawn. By you? Yep. Yeah, I was oh. gonna say 100 percent man. Yeah. You that's, should uh, so, if you haven't, you should check I, out. I had live, to ask because it's it, all it, the time. No, no, and it, it it's easy to fool people to in today's world. And I just I watch that and I I animation I feel is a skill that is rapidly going away from the 2D and into the 3D, and I miss the 2D. It's more there than you realize. And it's uh, you're going to see an influx of it, actually, honestly. But Good. more significantly, what we're really going to start seeing, and this is actually pretty exciting, honestly, is a deviation. Like, the realm of 2D and 3D is going to grow more and more narrow um, as time passes. Um, programs like Blender are already, like, basically skewing those lines. And so we are going to get things that more easily can... Um, become uh, like what we would hope. Well, um, as it, far it's as like and stuff like that goes. One of my my favorite animated films of all time is Treasure Planet, mm -hmm. and that was and and, and sadly, Diddley, uh, Disney had to uh, uh, decide to squash that in the ways that they did, uh, and really not make it popular at the time, but. That was really one of the early, early precursors to what we could see when it came to 2D merging with 3D. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, it was way ahead of its time. Like Treasure, and, that, and I think a lot of people recognize that, and they see why Treasure Planet was as, as good as it is and didn't deserve necessarily to be put on the back burner by Disney. But you look at the technology involved to pull that off. Um, there was a healthy chunk of money. Mm -hmm. It was a healthy chunk of money to do that. And it's something that as time goes on, I, I, I really haven't thought of the merger of 2D and 3D outside of a couple of the Dragon Ball Super movies that have come out recently. Uh, Dragon Ball Super Broly, I thought, did a great job with that. But if you're right, and the technology for the merger of 2D and 3D has finally gotten inexpensive enough for guys like yourself to pull it off, I think we're going to be in for a wild ride with some animation. Like it. To, to, to give you an idea, like th that's kind of the whole point is eventually you won't be able to tell. Um, mm -hmm. That's kind of where we're getting at. It, is it's coming to the point where like it's not about necessarily is it 2D or is it 3D? It's what is the final image? What is the final render mm -hmm. that actually is being achieved? Mm -hmm. And I actually did a small experiment in utilizing 3D space with 2D planes specifically. Um, for a project, um, the uh, the other world uh, microfilm I did. It's it's on my uh, my uh, YouTube, um, and like the the power of just three D lighting um, for a scene is so astronomically helpful, um, so unbelievably powerful in terms of like what you can really do with it. Um, and so as time goes on, yeah, I mean this is all done with like Blender, and Blender's free, you know. Um, Blender is, you can make full films, like bar none, no questions asked in Blender from day one. Uh, it's just yeah. a matter of knowing the software. And so that's where we are, is it's available. It's it's here now. That's nuts. And what drawing program do you, is it Clip Studio Paint or? Yeah, primarily Clip Studio Paint is my mm. drawing program. Okay, that's what I think. So. And they, they have good 3D integrations, I believe. So you can easily yes. bring in 3D models and bake stuff in and do all this yep. other stuff. So actually that's that's heavily used in the Blind King because I'm not going to draw those chess boards. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so those are actually 3D models. Um, and so, yeah, no, very useful and just makes it so much easier to, to, to handle really difficult objects and stuff like that. Um, without compromising the, the line work or anything like that. That's mm -hmm. so cool. So as you're as you're like leveraging these tools, uh, 
you know, what are for somebody? Well, OK, let me, let me stop and, and formulate this properly. But animation is a very time intensive um, product, right? Even yeah. even with all this leverage and everything else, the the question I have is, you know, as as you're doing all this and you are, um, you know, basically going out there creating this kind of product, do you feel like you are doing things as efficiently as you can? Or do you think that there are, are avenues? Do you see improvements coming down the pipe that are going to speed this process up? Do you think that indies should be less afraid of animation? You know what I mean? Or is it is it as daunting as I feel? Like, am I correct in my assessment that it's a pretty daunting task? I would I would say it really depends on what you're going for. So so for example, I, I worked on um, the uh, the pilot uh, for Lackadaisy not too long ago. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw um, you mention that. Yeah, and um, that was a very, I mean, it took them like three years to do it. Right, I was only on there for about a year, mm -hmm. and so something like that is is very much still a daunting task because it mm -hmm. is taking a more traditional approach. Everything's drawn by hand. All the lighting is. It has to be composited everything like that everything is cleaned up right i was i was part of the cleanup team and it was yeah. it was time consuming sometimes those frames would take upwards of like 40 minutes to do just one frame right um and so it really depends on on what you're doing and how you're going about uh executing it um i know another guy though um gilded guy yeah he goes by gilded guy he's part of the okay. fighting community if, if you're familiar with that he owns Dota. yeah I, I i know actually what that is that's what's funny yeah <laughs> Yeah, it's still around. It's awesome. It's it's really cool. Um, and he, I, it was so funny. I was talking to him on one of his streams, and he's he started production on um, um, his like eighth film in a series or like ninth film in a series, and he was like, "Oh yeah, I'm. It's about thirty minutes long, and I'm thinking about I I'll probably get it done in about like a year." And I'm like, "That's." freaking crazy doing 30 minutes of animation in a year right mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. he knows his routine he knows his style he knows what he can and can't get away with right that's the most important thing um is how can you leverage your tools to make it as efficient as possible essentially um mm -hmm. what are you willing to compromise do you want to have like the most pristine perfect clean line work and stuff like that or can you get a little bit sloppy? Can you make it a little bit more energetic? Uh, like, can you use that to your advantage, right? So I would say yeah. anyone who wants to get into animation, it's it's really what you make of it um, and how you refine it that will really, like, kind of dictate how long it's going to take you. It's always going to be a lot of work. Animation is just, just good animation is always going to be a lot of work. But mm -hmm. it, it, it it's all about, like, what are you trying to get out of it and how can you use these tools in a way that will, will make it more efficient as far as me as far as do i feel like i'm as efficient as i can be i'd say i'm getting there <laughs> i'd say yeah. i'm learning a lot of more tools that's why i was learning blender is blender does make it perfect. yeah blender is a very steep learning curve it, it is but once you once you understand it and and i had the benefit of learning 3d in school and so i was able to carry that knowledge i, I learned maya and let me mm -hmm. tell you, going from Maya to Blender, it's like, why didn't we just learn Blender? <laughs> yeah. um, I know why we didn't, but like, regardless, I, I love Blender far more than Maya. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. But but it, it, there is kind of this like, it, it is very like esoteric at first. It's, it's very like, just why is this the way that it is? What does this, any of this mean? Especially coming from other softwares, it, it doesn't read like a typical software usually. Um, yeah, it's but, it's it's very particular. I I used yeah. to be very good with Blender for three D modeling, but mm -hmm. then I just you know <laughs> they changed some things up with I I think the jump to three point or something like that. Yeah, I I it was before that, and I don't remember. I, I was coming back to it. I was like, oh boy, this is a this is a mystery mm -hmm. uh, to me. I'm I'm like I kind of remember some things, and I'm merging some vertices and doing some stuff like that. But yeah. I primarily don't use it for um, 3D modeling. I've mm -hmm. done a little bit of 3D modeling, but that's obviously not my strong suit. But I have mm -hmm. used it for more like compositing, for yeah. putting things together, parallax, lighting, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so, so how much are you baking in with with 
with um well i'm sorry i'm getting way too technical into the blender side of things here <laughs> but i'm i was just kind of curious i mean are you are you doing any of the shading through blender or is are you basically just using it as kind of um, like the 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 line work some of the background line work type stuff i would love to get into shaders um mm -hmm. that is a whole technical mess that oh my gosh i just i need to wrap my head around um even with my knowledge of, of nodes and, and kind of pipeline sort of style development and stuff like that it's still like man it's so complicated to figure out like what exactly does what you know mm -hmm. so i haven't really explored shaders so much um yeah, that's that's where things get uh, get crazy you mm -hmm. know yes yeah no it becomes very powerful at that point oh yeah but um but i have for the most part like for the for example the microfilm uh, other world that was um um that was all like you can see like the shadows as the the flare is lit and stuff like that um that was all hand done um because mm -hmm. i just i couldn't think of a better way to do it at the time um yeah and so, and, and I, I come from a background of just being like, well, just do it by hand, basically. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm a little more traditionalist in that way. Um, I'm beginning to branch out because obviously that just takes so freaking long. Um, but um, I would love to get into the more like technical side if it means saving time, if it means getting cooler mm -hmm. effects. Um, even if I have to compromise, you know, the precision, the the precision of the um, effect. Um, yeah, that's okay because you know you got to compromise somewhere. Somewhere that's got to you got to decide, right? And that's actually a very good compromise because you can do so much more with it. Um, so yeah, like um, there's so much potential with all that, and it is becoming easier and easier. You know, there's a tutorial for everything, um, and yeah. one of the big things I'm looking into and doing research on is pulling line work from 3D models. Um, because yes. if you can do that, then that's, oh my gosh, that saves so much time. <laughs> yeah, that's very, um, very powerful. And there there are definitely ways to do that. Oh yeah, um, very easy ways to do that, actually. Yeah, yeah, it's totally possible. Um, anyway, so as far as, uh, to, to back out of the weeds here, we've gone quite yeah. a bit into it. Um, when Go on, are, I'm just drinking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... What um, you know, you said that you're you're done drawing the mask. What <laughs> what uh, kind of are, are there any teasers or or anything that you want to hint at as far as the you know upcoming uh, plot lines or you know where are we going to see? Um, uh, man, I'm I'm so sorry, but I blanked on the girl's name. Um, she doesn't have one. She doesn't have a name. Okay, I was like, I'm, I'm like, hold on. What do you call her? What, what, what what's the blind. term? The I blind. Okay. Blind. Yeah. Okay. All right. So blind. Uh, is there are there any, uh, uh, you know, hints or or things you want to talk about in terms of where the story is going that we can look forward um, to? Chapter. Th I'm really looking forward to chapter three. I'll I'll say that um, because things are definitely going to change. Um, mm -hmm. it, tonally and hopefully like because because right now chapter one and two has been very like very like specifically vague like you are just kind of yeah yeah everything I, I from definitely her feel that <laughs> yeah and so that's never really going to go away necessarily but you will hopefully begin to and this really comes down to me and how i present it um mm -hmm. you will begin to hopefully grasp what you're witnessing like what specifically you're witnessing mm -hmm. why like chess is so involved and who these characters really are and what the relation is to, to all of them um that will begin to hopefully kind of unfold um one thing that i think that is is kind of funny and, and something that i, I can clear up I, I think that this this was more of a problem when it was just the film released but mm -hmm. i will say that um, blind is not the blind king. That is a different character. And yeah, I, I didn't. Well, that's. I, I'll be honest. Whenever you said uh, that's blind, I was. I was thinking to myself. I was like, well, that. Hmm, that's not what I was expecting. Uh, 
so the the because I was like, I don't think that's the blind king. But anyway, okay, all right. Yeah, no, you were right. Um, there's a lot of people who are like, oh, this, this must be the blind king, right? Obviously, she's blind and everything like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's that's not the case. Um, I actually I I came up with the name before I really had the whole plot sorted out. Mm -hmm. um, so that's just kind of a funny circumstance that came out of it. But um, yeah, I, I don't know how much I want to say. Um, partially because like i'm not 100 percent sure how things are going to go down i will say the the last page of chapter two you are introduced to a character i'm very excited to be writing um so that'll that'll be a lot of fun um and yeah i just it it probably will be a longer chapter as well um so mm -hmm. that'll that'll be interesting um have to see how that plays out because this is already going to be like uh i'm i'm looking at like 150 140 pages for this whole thing um mm -hmm. so got to like, yeah um but um let's see is there anything i want to i i guess i um hopefully you will begin to see more of the character of blind um because Again, kind of going back to the whole philosophy of design by subtraction, she's kind of mm -hmm. involved in that. She's not meant to be a character where you're like, at least initially, she's not meant to be that character where it's like, oh, he, let me show you how relatable she is. Let me show you mm. how, like what her struggle is or, or anything like that so that you can root for her. That's actually not really the point of blind, yeah. um, at least in the traditional sense. Um, and ho again, hopefully that'll become more clear as what goes on, like what exactly she is and mm -hmm. the significance of her inner dialogue um, and her reaction to the world. Um, I, there's, there's stuff I want to say, but it's like, no, don't say that. Let, let them <laughs> I'm tempting it. you. Don't okay. Me. All right. I'm, sorry. Um, I'm tempting myself, honestly. Um, but um, yeah, so I, I guess that that's, um, that's a lot of what I can say, I suppose. I all right, all right, it, honestly. all right. Well, you know, we, we, we. I gave it a, a the college try. You know, yeah. we won't something. drag it out of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, so when is the? Uh, uh, I, I was going to say I. I wanted to also mention that you live stream regularly, and people mm -hmm. can probably, uh, you know. How far, like you're, you've been working on chapter three for a couple months now, correct? Or um, so chapter like two, two? Uh, uh, chapter two, I was working on since, since the beginning of this year, actually. Um, my yeah. goal was to get chapter two out, um, by halfway through this year. And yeah. I basically did that. It, it's the seventh was month. it June or, or something? Uh, it was July. It was actually. July. It was, so it, it was, was very few weeks back. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was. I, I released the first. I, I released in ten batch, uh, ten page batches. Okay, um, and how basically. many pages uh, are there total? Maybe I haven't seen all of chapter two. Chapter two is roughly, I think, like twenty two pages. I think, or something like that. Okay. Um, you know what I think happened? I think I saw the first half of chapter two. That makes yeah. more sense now because I remember chapter being like, "Choose complete." <laughs> the feeling like I needed to see more. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, good. Yeah. And, um. Okay, I was gonna say, and what's going to like? You are also talking about a, a physical release. Are you going to want to have all your chapters complete before you consider doing that, or honestly, is there a break point? Honestly, I do because the story. You know, you just you just mentioned you want to see more, right? Like you feel like mm -hmm. you need to see more, and that's going to be that the way that that story is until the end, and even then, at the at the very end, it'll it'll be you might want to see more so i don't know mm -hmm. yet um but i just i don't feel it doesn't feel right breaking it into like it's like selling the chapter because it just doesn't feel like a complete story like when you buy a yeah. comic book it's like yeah. there's a complete narrative there for the most part it might be multi-spanning as far as like an arc goes but yeah. typically you have a beginning middle and end and that's not really how i'm doing the chapters i, I mean there are checkpoints Mm -hmm. But they they they're meant to just lead one to the other. So I, I really I just don't. It doesn't feel right putting out the chapters as a print. Yeah. Um, 
until like you have it all together as like a one graphic novel essentially mm -hmm. um and that's where i'm really coming from is the graphic novel approach i suppose um rather than the comic approach because that, that's what i grew i didn't grow up with you know issue comics and stuff like that i grew up with graphic novels um specifically like bone a lot of um Tenapel stuff uh, a few other things there and there um and so um so yeah that that's kind of my philosophy on it that's my kind of logic on it is, so as far um, as ways to support of... you for people who want to you know uh you know i feel like you're you're dedicated to this it's, it's sort of a, a self-motivated thing but as far as you know helping you along what's the the best way that that people can support you i, I know that um, you have some art for sale over on the shop or do you yeah. have a uh, Patreon I, I have or, or I have else? a Ko-Fi uh, or Coffee, okay. whatever however you pronounce it. Um, but I have a Ko-Fi. I want to get things set up on the Ko-Fi. Currently, what it says I think is there's one tier, um, and of course you can just donate individually, like like mm -hmm. a few dollars here and there. That goes a long way. Um, and um, I, I need to start promoting that more myself, honestly. And, and, mm -hmm. But my my goal for it is I want to provide something through that. If you do become like you're, you're giving me, you're taking your money and you are saying here, I'm supporting you. I want to offer at least something that is like of value immediately rather than like what I'm automatically going to do. Right. And so one thing that I've thought about is, um, stuff like, um, that's another thing actually, Evelyn does make a good point is commissioning me. Um, I just did a, um, a black and white piece for him. Um, it looks really and killer it, too. Yeah, it does. Super fun I, piece to do. Yeah, yeah, um, I, I got to see that. That was really <laughs> that almost made it into the thumbnail. Oh yeah, I yeah, that almost made it into the thumbnail when you sent it. And I was just like, "Whoa, that's really." But I I really wanted it to be uh, uh, some of your your other artwork. But yeah, mm -hmm. I, I saw that when you sent it over, and I was like, "That's." Holy crap. Mm -hmm. You you got some talent, man. Uh, that's actually a style that I really enjoy doing. So if you're in the mood for if you want something like that or, or I have a I have a, co a whole collection of um black and white pieces I've done both on my um website and I I did for Inktober I did a, a um what's it called? A time lapse of all of them all 31 days. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. Um, oh, that's really cool. Yeah. And, yeah, it was super fun. And I so I really developed that style during that time. And so that's a really easy commission for I can do those are, in a couple are, hours. Are you um, OK if I show the Evely? Are, are you OK if I show that? Yeah, go for it. Um, that's that's public. It's on my Twitter. I, I showed it on my Twitter and everything. OK, Evely has no problem. OK. okay. Um, but yeah, that's yeah, I mean, I, there, there, there's also uh, there's also a magazine, uh, an Iron Age magazine that's always looking for artists. So, you know. I actually wanted to get into contact with you about Sir. that because I have a comic. I hopefully could do it in probably like ten pages or something like that. That I would love to, like, do something like that with. No oh, man, um, I would love I would love to have a comic from you. That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah. But you know, so, it's also one of those things where it's like, uh, you know, uh, give me a ten page comic, and it's like, and then other people are like, well, why why is the uh, the Blind King chapter three not out yet? And they're like, well. <laughs> You see, <laughs> Anvil Magazine. You see, here's what happened was. Yeah. This well, here is the Evely. Like, yeah, that, that, was, that is so freaking cool. I like it. That was so much fun. That. Man, Evely's been uh, I, killing it lately, also. Dude's been in on general. Yeah. He's been, he's been everywhere like he the can it's so is hilarious freaking. yeah i made the i uh, like made the uh i saw the that anvil unboxing video i i i really that's so that good <laughs> that was really good yeah he takes the axe and like cuts the box open and i'm just like how did you cut that i saw that and i was just like <laughs> jump how did cut. Very uh, no no it wasn't even just well a jump done. cut i was like what 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 did you do to make that a, a thing that looked like the thing that you did don't question <laughs> it Bryce. no no no. i i have to question it because in my brain i'm like i've done camera work like that and i know what that takes <laughs> man but, many but, uh, talents that one 
But see, see. But uh, to to kind of go off at the point where it's like, oh, where's where's chapter three? I'm gonna give full <laughs> disclosure. I I work as a teacher to to support myself. It'll be out when it's out. Like I I, well, I, yeah, I can only yeah. be so much. You know? <laughs> I know. I'm just. Oh, saying, you mean? I, I oh, you mean that me under the, the bus is what I'm saying. Justifiably no. throwing me under the bus if I try and lure you out. <laughs> yeah, and by the way, you are terrible with your Kofi because I can't even find it. It's not on your website or yeah. It, um, it should. Um, be somewhere I got <laughs> <laughs> you'll find it just be on the internet long enough you'll stumble across it never mind part the other thing uh, you're gonna have to the... take some shilling lessons from daniel here if it's... yeah no like, like, part of, no part of the is no don't kind of show for no shut everything down stop talking about everything just stare into the camera and don't say a word i'll, I'll just send that's it one second <laughs> Daniel, uh, Daniel's the worst shill me. ever. Okay, okay, okay. I'm don't gonna. Listen to me. I'm gonna. So Daniel's the worst shill ever, and I am absolutely going to. I'm going to read this. I have to go back to the Wednesday post that I made because this is the most hilarious stuff ever. It's the Wednesday post, uh, Animated Moon. It's on uh, Twitter. I don't know if you know about X now. Dumb name. X gonna give it to you. I'm going to give it to you. X. Sorry, damn it. Now it's stuck in my head. Every time. But so, I, yeah. so here's the post. I, I I copy and paste this every week because I'm gonna be honest. My days are are filled up, and <laughs> coming up with a quippy one liner for telling people how to share their stuff is hey, it's finally Wednesday. Drop your projects down below for the weekly shout out live stream tonight. And don't forget to retweet and tag everyone. The more, the merrier. And Daniel, here's here's his shill. You don't have to read this, <laughs> but I wanted to share it all the same. We literally gave you shit on that stream. Like I even Trippy was, was like, I love Daniel, but his shills are like, no, that's not hey, what you no. quit after the first couple of lines, and that's why I said that, because it was long and I didn't want you to have to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't listen. I, Roy's not listening. Huh? <laughs> oh, you motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> that was an off the cuff, long ass poem. I mean, it was really good. It was really good. It got a lot of people hooked, and they're like, oh. And they're like, dude, we want to hear more. I'm like, well, then vote for it. And they did, they, they, and they didn't do the thing. <laughs> that's the Better problem project. with having a bunch of randos just like vote to see which one we're going to talk about at the end of the I don't know it's a terrible show I, I try <laughs> nah much better projects no I dude it it it's so hard it's so hard on Wednesdays because there are so many projects that are that are just unbelievably good but all in different ways and that's the hard part mm -hmm. you can see the creativity you can see the passion you can hear what people are telling to you and it and it's gotten to a point at least on my end of things it's like okay like I, I feel like I'm like, I have to go with my knee-jerk reaction. But because I host the show, I don't even get really to do my knee-jerk reaction. So as I'm scrolling through a lot of times, and everybody's like, oh, I wanted this one, so I have to scroll up and I have to pull up that window. I'm seeing all the projects again, and I'm like, fuck, I don't know which one I want to choose. But I have to vote. Those are my rules. I have to pick one. <laughs> I, I, I have to do it. And, and it, it, I get caught sometimes because I always tell people they're like, they're like, man, I don't know. I'm caught between like two or three or four or five of them. And I just don't know. I'm like, just pick. And to keep the show rolling on, like me as the host, I'm like, well, I can't be like, oh, well, I've got like five of them that I want to, because there are, <laughs> I, I want to shout them all out. And I'm like, I, I have to pick. And so as I'm so that's usually why I try to save my vote for the last is because I let everybody get theirs out and then it get kind of 
kind of gives me a chance to scroll through. And half the time, I'm just like, I, I don't know. I don't know. It, it's unbelievable the amount of talent that is attaching themselves to this Iron Age moniker. I didn't think that that was going to be a thing when this Iron Age thing kicked. I, I didn't. I don't know, because you see a lot of people attach themselves to like indie projects and stuff like that before. Mm -hmm. There must be something different about whatever the philosophy is behind this movement, because there's there's nothing out there that I would say that is trashed here. There's nothing out there that's garbage. There are things that out there that I could say are probably mid but nothing that's genuinely bad that I've seen so far. And I, 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 I don't know why this movement garners that type of talent out of the indie world. Do, you, do any of you guys have an idea on that? Uh, I would say, I would well, say I think... it's passion-oriented <laughs> as much as talent. Well, I, I also think that there is a there are a lot of people out there who are coming at this from a different angle than uh, what you've seen a lot of other creators come at it from. Right. Yep. So <clears throat> I think that if you look at. Um, well, I mean, like. The animated moon is a perfect example of this, right? He was talking about his experience that uh, really set him on this path and, and, you know, you know, uh, solidified these things is that a lot of people are out there kind of trying to create something for the attention of having created it. it that That's sort of the, the standard, um, way that a lot of entertainment has become over the past few decades mm -hmm. i would say definitely it's it's more about being uh, a part of that culture of oh i'm an artist you know what i mean oh i'm somebody <laughs> I'm who an artist yes exactly and all that it's like oh i'm an author and i'm whatever and it's not necessarily that it's driven by you know actual like a love of the medium or the need to share some vision or some idea as much as it is that it was like a, a social club, a cultural, um, you know, a desire, something beyond the, um, the product essentially, you know, that they, they had some, not that it's bad to have goals beyond just a single like product. I want to tell this story or something else. That's fine. But that, that was their driving motivation were, were things outside all the art, all the, everything else was just kind of tools. Uh -huh. And so I think that that's been the standard for so long. And I, I think that it's really, you know, I, I, I don't think anybody would argue that the rot is really starting to become incredibly obvious. And it's gone from like hampering the creation of things to just outright making certain quality impossible, you know, yeah. in the mainstream. And so you have all these people and, you know, well, yeah, like, like Daniel said, I mean, it's, it's passions because people are realizing that <clears throat> there are, you know, that, that my God, if I don't do this, nobody is not only is nobody going to do it exactly this, but nobody's going to do anything even that close to it either, you know? So. Well, I, I, uh oh, <laughs> that was weird. I touched buttons that I shouldn't have. <laughs> Sorry, my audio monitoring disappeared, and I was just like, no. <laughs> audio monitoring is highly important. Um, but I, I saw uh, it was Iron Age Marketing. Uh, Nikki, he shared that clip. He and Daniel were talking about how blue collar creatives. There's a blue collar creative movement. It's like the blue collar guys are just the. There's a different mentality with blue collar, you know, workers who are now creating than there was with all these other people. And mm -hmm. it's that we get the job done. You just you, you you have to get the job done. That's what blue collar people do. And at least what I've been exposed to 
you know, there's definitely a blue collar feeling to all of this. It's like, there's a job to get done. I'm going to get this job done. And, and that's just how it's going to be. And come hell or high water, it doesn't matter what happens. Not only am I going to deal with the stresses of the day, but I'm also going to get this thing done. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I actually tagged a razor fist on Twitter for that. And I, and yeah. I don't, I, I try not to tag the, the, the bigger people very often because they probably get tagged 17,000 times a day. I know how much I get tagged in a day. And I can't even imagine <laughs> the their level, but I was I, I really felt that I was like, yeah, the blue collar guys are finally coming out going, oh no, we're we're making stuff now, mm -hmm. and there is a mentality behind that. And as soon as I heard that, I was like, wait a minute, I know that feeling. I know what you guys are talking about. And I is that something that the rest of you can kind of agree with? Is that it's. Yeah. Well, I uh, thought the t the idea was apt because, as I was explaining it in the short time I had with Nikki P, you know, it's the guys that are doing the job, and then they're going to go talk about it with their buddies over a couple of drinks. Mm -hmm. But the more I was thinking about it, there's another aspect of that, which we talked about a thousand times, which is you get a bunch of blue collar guys together and go, I want to build a shed. What's going to happen? It's, yeah. <laughs> it's it, turns get in, it turns into a weekend where every single one of them descends on the ground and makes it happen. And that's what we do in the Iron Age. Mm -hmm. you know, we say, I want to do this, and everybody bands together in some way, mm -hmm. giving ideas, I've, working on stuff, how, uh, creating things and sending it over I, to get the job I, done. I've had that with the Smoker Project acts actually like I've, I've, I've had, you know, a buddy of mine come over, obviously family, family and, and other obligations happen, but people have helped me They're It's like, I, you know, <laughs> guys at work are finding things and bring it here, man. We found this for you. Like, it, it's just that thing is, is that blue collar mentality. Oh, oh, we're going to build something. Oh, and it, and it's not that, oh, we're going to build something and it'll get done in five years. No, no, no. This thing's getting done. And I, I experienced that in, in my day to day. And I loved when you guys were talking about that because not a lot of people talk about the blue collar guys, mm -hmm. not a lot of people. I, I have actually, what the funny thing is, is I have actually in a weird way and I can't believe it, but I have I have experienced the prejudice of being of, of being the guy wearing a hard hat because of where I used to work. I used to work in the Denver metro area. I used to work around Boulder, Colorado. And if you wore a hard hat and a vest, they they didn't even want to look at you. They didn't want you in their shops. They wouldn't let you use the bathrooms. It was they people look at people look at the blue collar workers like they are trash, like they're not worth even being in the building. But if I went in there in my street clothes, they wouldn't think anything about it. But if I go in there in my business suit, which is, a, you know, a high vis vest and a hard hat and safety glasses and all that, they've got a big problem with it. And it's, it's, it's interesting that I think that that a lot of what we're seeing right now with the Iron Age and indie creators is that we're seeing the guys who are wearing the hard hats right now who are writing the good stories who are putting the work in who are doing all of that are really pissing off those white collar class we went to college we know how to write who have tanked our favorite franchises and i really think that that's what we're seeing we are we're really seeing these people come out and have just a prejudice for the blue collar class. And I, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm seeing a lot of similarities. And like I said, I've, I've actually had people turn their nose up at me because I was in a hard hat and a vest mm -hmm. for my job. And, and I, I'm seeing a lot of, I'm realizing that that wasn't just because I'm a construction worker. That's because there was a, there's a, there's a classist thing kind of going on here, or at least a, 
I, I presumed think classist. I also think there's a lot of um, a little bit. Well, not to not to get too far afield, but I do think that this kind of bumps up against <laughs> the same issue that you run into whenever you uh, encounter things like the the sort of secular ideology of a lot of uh, Ooh, uh, said urban areas, buzzwords. right? You know what I mean? Like, so it's it's uh, you you get a I, I mean, people have made politics their religion, you know, in, in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. And I mean, yes, you could say that the right has made, you know, and everything else. But I think that much more yeah. than that, I think culturally speaking, um, in a lot of these areas that, uh, I mean, if you look at the, the party, I would there's no, there's really not a worker friendly party on, on the left. You know what I mean? There's, there's really not. And so mm -mm. all of these educated areas, I, I, and I would argue that only I, live traditionally. You know I would I, mean? I would argue that there is a barely majority of a worker friendly party on the right too. But yeah, I'm and I'm not saying that yeah. it's a and, lot better. And, and and but but yeah, but no, I think you're right. It it's the guys that are putting their nose to the grindstone and and it's yeah, that's kind of the point. I mean, if you consider the concept, the mainstream entertainment system is a room full of architects. And I fucking they, hate them. I hate they can, architects. They engineers. can draw whatever them. the heck they want. They can draw whatever yeah. they want, but it takes the rest of us to put the building together. And now those of us who've been putting the building together for years have decided we're going to start drawing our own stuff and then building it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that, um, honestly, I, th I think a big thing that kind of stuck out in my mind was what uh, Richard said earlier, where, you have this media inspiring other media. Actually, the, the term I use for that is incestuous media. <laughs> yeah. Where yeah. That's, that's where it's coming from. But I, yeah. I call it a circle media. jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the, Not when right. I think of inspiration, when I think of where people Sorry, came Rice. from, because like, I accept. Obviously, you had these really brilliant creators before. You know, where did they come from, right? They didn't come from. Uh, Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. George Lucas didn't come from Star Wars. You know, he made it, right? Yeah. But but I, I go back to like um we talked about Rod Serling earlier. Where did he come from? He came from war. Mm -hmm. he, he, he was like 19, I think, in World War II. He saw yeah. things no one should ever have to see, right? Oh, talk, I mean, look at Tolkien. Tolkien yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. even C.S. Lewis, right? Yeah. I yep. believe Agreed. so. Um, or um uh, uh another one, um, and I think that this this will lead into another point. Um uh, Christopher Lee, for goodness sakes, you know, oh, God. protagonist of the, the 20th century. Um, had a he, metal for goodness Christopher sake. Lee, watching the interview where he described the breath leaving a man's lungs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and, and you, and, and it's such a soft spoken, I, I can't imagine. He's one of those guys that, uh, in, in, or I should say gentlemen, like to, I mean, Sir Christopher Lee, like, yeah, he's, he's one of those gentlemen. I cannot imagine that man raising his voice. And for him, when I think he was describing to Peter Jackson during the Lord of the Rings movies, the sound of, of air leaving a man's lungs because he had been the cause of that. <laughs> <laughs> or at least witness to it. I no, I I think I I mean he was in he was in uh I believe World War One or World War Two. Two. World War Two he was. It was a, two. He was yeah, the, he was two. That's yeah. right. Tolkien was one. Yeah, Christopher Lee was two. Yeah, he was under, undercover in Germany. Yeah, but he he described what it was to put a bayonet into someone's chest and the mm -hmm. the, the sound because he wanted that sound to come out when in, in the scene. And, and to hear that, you go, th this man who's pretending to be an evil wizard on screen. Let's just, mm -hmm. let's get really reductive with this, because I like being really reductive with things. This man who's pretending to be an evil wizard on screen, who just fell off a building, is now describing to the director 
the sound that he remembers after he pulled the air out of someone's lungs. We do not have that today. Even with a lot of our blue collar writers and stuff. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying we haven't worked hard. I'm not saying that we haven't sweat. I'm not saying that we haven't been in the trenches. We haven't, we, we, I'm not saying that we haven't done those things. Mm -hmm. But there is an experience level there that the older generation had and possibly why the stories that we all grew up with just j just had a, 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 a magnitude of impact on multiple generations in a way that 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 I think the current day writers cannot achieve and us blue collar writers can at least get close to. Well, to kind of further the point under, you know, the interviews and stuff like that, one of the interviews that Christopher Lee did was he, he essentially criticizing the industry where it was headed. And that yeah. was, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, that someone was... like him, he did not start at the top, right? There, there was an interview where you talked about that. He was he was like a stage hand at first, right? Mm -hmm. He did everything yeah. to like get, get in there, right? And now we're, we're, we're at a point where there is this, I, I look at like the way that, media is kind of portrayed and how it's how it's sold nowadays and that's a key word because that's what it is it's 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 branding right why do you put an actor into a film you don't do it because it's the right actor you do it because it's it's good branding essentially right mm -hmm. and that's where we're at is is this this system that is fueled by ego and i think that this goes actually into what makes this movement different and why i was actually interested in getting involved in it is mm -hmm. you know there have been other movements i'll, I'll pick this one i don't want to get too much into it but but i i have some thoughts on it um and that's like the whole comics gate thing mm -hmm. and kind of one of my criticisms with that is it's like kind of just shifting the goal or not necessarily not that's the wrong term but it's kind of playing to the same music in my book where it's like ego driven it's like oh we're the guys who used to make all these really good comics or whatever now we're doing it again right it's like that's fair enough that's mm -hmm. not what I'm interested in, though. I'm interested in someone who's not done anything before. What can they do, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And and especially if you're coming at it from this perspective of ego, it's like, well, then you already think you're all that. You have nowhere to go, essentially, right? I'm not going to witness any growth if that's the perspective you're going to continue having. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's what's really different about this is these are just, for lack of a better term, my, I'll include myself in this, we're nobodies. Right. Mm -hmm. and that's, but that's great because it, we have this vast <laughs> world. There's not this like preordained, like bizarre structure we're trying to kind there's, of like, promote brand or whatever, you know, there, you there's nobody gatekeeping name. us. Yeah. Cause we can just do it. We, Even yeah. if they were, we just knocked the gate down. Oh, and, uh, why bother with the gate? Who wants yeah, to go into a city yeah. that's killing itself? There's, yeah, why, 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 you know? I, I gotta be honest, like, the it's gate, just, bro. like if, somebody, if somebody closes the gate on me, it's just like, oh, well, I'm just gonna go over here and have fun, and when people There's see that that world. gate's closed, like, I'm just gonna mm -hmm. say, hey, I got beer, I got chicken, come on. <laughs> Let them lock themselves in their <laughs> citadels, and they'll be eating each other in the week. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. that's what they do. It's yeah, like, I have no interest in that. And I think there's a lot of people who didn't have interest in that. And so you see this whole That's Iron Age thing. It's like Trippy says, it's not a community. It's a movement. You make it what you're going to make it, right? The whole idea is just do something new. Make it yourself, right? True. Whether it's as refined as the, the professionals, who cares? You're working on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's what we need. Because I think about older creators. That's where they. That's where they started. They didn't start you know, with multi-billion dollar franchises, all that kind of crap. No, they started making terrible things and then they got better. That's how it Yes. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're sitting there, you have to make it the best thing ever immediately. Good luck. It, no such it, thing as perfect. No, I, I think that's 100% the way to, to view things because so many people uh, are... You know, I, I, I am a big proponent of always striving for professionalism mm -hmm. in, in everything that you do. And you're uh, on this show. I'm like, yeah, I know, right? <clears throat> what am I doing? <laughs> I reevaluate things. But <laughs> no, the, the, the thing, though, is that I, the, the delivery systems, all these things that 
were the structures that kept people out or regulated things, all that stuff has been knocked down. And the just the the reality is is that very 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 few people, even even within the Iron Age, I don't think that there's a full appreciation of just how permissionless we are, like how close we are to being able to to make that change. Mm-hmm. And it's one of those ones where it grows. The more people who realize that there's no need, you know, it, it's part of the reason why I barely watch a lot of the, um, uh, you know, culture commentary channels that I used that I, I still like the guys. I like what they have to say. If I mm-hmm. listen to their stuff, I enjoy it, but I just don't, I don't listen to them because they're talking about something that I just don't even, I'm not even aware of it. You know what I mean? It's like, <clears throat> I, yeah. Like, you know, like, like everybody's no, no, talking about the Barbie care. movie. Fair enough. That actually no, seems it, like mildly interesting because it's like a misinterpretation. It's like a Starship Troopers level of, of, <laughs> uh, of like misunderstanding. <laughs> you know what I mean? Of like it's, director failure or something like that. But you know, that aside, I just no, always that director just Star Trek. Didn't. I don't know. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't know what's going on. There's dancing Klingons or something. I, well, and it looks terrible. They did. They did a uh, a what is it called there's a term for it but it's basically just a musical episode and yeah it got is that what that is that why i've been hearing about musicals yeah and i don't you know and (laughs) and the the thing is too is i blame joss i i i had a i i had a sentiment about the cultural commentary guys a while back that was fairly negative and to a point you'll kind of hear me talk about it in that it's not necessarily for me anymore, but there are so many people every day who are getting that, who are getting that shock that, oh my God, what did they just do to my favorite IP? Oh yeah, I mean, I understand why they're still doing it. Yeah, And, and and a lot of those guys will say it's just for money. And it may be for them, and that's fine. The fact of the matter is, is that it is giving people when they did to Star Wars what they did. So I I, I did my nostalgia uh, video this last week. And God, I would I I, I would love to do a 30 minute long full breakdown. I I just don't have the time. I I might do a nostalgia part two because there's so much that I I couldn't touch on in a 10 minute video. Mm -hmm. But Star Wars Star Wars and what they did um, in really once they decanonized the EU, they solidified it with The Last Jedi and I and I and I wouldn't watch it. And I obviously I don't talk about Star Wars much on the channel Mm -hmm. that that broke me in a way that I I didn't understand could happen with me because it's a fucking story. It's a movie. And that was weird for me. I don't, I'm not even nostalgic for stuff from like when I was a kid, like stuff getting like, I I've really removed a lot of that part of me when it comes to the nostalgia side and star Wars for years. I, I, I was wishing that they would put something out that was, that was credible enough that I could go back Hmm. to watching this, that I could go back to seeing this thing. And for years, I was in a space where listening to other people kind of trash on it was cathartic Mm -hmm. because for some dumb reason that I still cannot explain today, I had an attachment to an IP so much so that it 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 hurt almost physically. I've never felt that before. I thought mm-hmm. and and I use and I I would tell people I'm like, "Man, that's the dumbest thing ever. That's super like it's stupid. It's just a thing." And then it happened to this thing and I was like, "What the hell is wrong with me?" And it took me years to work through that whole process. And I realize a lot of these guys out there now who are doing the cultural commentary, who are, you know, they're talking about the Barbie movie. They're talking about uh, the new season of Star Trek. They're talking about The Witcher right now and 
the Hollywood strikes and 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 how a lot of these IPs are just getting ruined. And I realized where I was and listening to these guys kind of trash on it, kind of dogging it. And but they were there with me. They were there going, what the hell is, why would they do this to this thing that we love so much? And that helped me get through that. Now I realize how foolish I was in that regard, but I've moved past that. Mm -hmm. And I think Richard, from what you're saying, you've also moved past that. And I've yeah. also seen commentary in my videos where people are like, yeah, it's ridiculous that the guys are still doing that. But I also realized that where I was, five, six, seven years ago, that might mm -hmm. be somebody today who's just now seeing that thing that they loved with mm -hmm. like, like that was their thing. That was mm -hmm. their thing that they loved just get eviscerated in front of their eyes, which I don't know how much more there is left, but I say that, you know, knock on wood. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I don't know. I, I got a little off into the weeds on that one but i feel like the because you mentioned the mentioned some of the people that you still like the cultural commentary people i mm. do find it hard to listen to a lot of them because again i've i've moved on i'm i'm so far removed from all that stuff that they're talking about but i also realized that we were there once mm -hmm. and, and that that was kind of my point in a nutshell there yeah I, I, I think I got a little off the weeds on that one, but there's there's a lot there though. And I think that there would be a lot there for all of us who have gone, who, who have experienced that and and, and so on. It, it, uh, Andrew, have you, have you ever, did you ever go through that with uh, some of the modern IPs? Did you ever, or were you not? Um, were you... To be honest, like my, I, the thing about me is like, I, I you know I grew up on Star Wars. I grew up on like the Lord of the Rings movies and everything like that. So I and and even Star Trek, right? I you know I watched the Next Generation when I was in high school. I loved it, right? Um, but I've never had this like everything that I've experienced. I've always felt like it's an instance, right? Hmm. And I think part of that is I I've grown up on stuff over the past like hundred years, right? I grew up with like Laurel and Hardy. I grew up with the Marx Brothers. Yes. yes. Oh, so sure. I'm, I'm, I'm not sit. I was never as a kid. I was never sitting there like, oh, I can't wait for the next Laurel and Hardy movie that that had been been and gone. So I was mm. I was used to that, right? Mm. I was used to letting things go, honestly, like let it like it's like because they were already dead. They, they were gone. Mm -hmm. But I could still enjoy it, right? Oh yeah. And so whenever I heard like, oh yeah, they're um, they're screwing up Star Trek or whatever, it's like, well, it's a shame, right? I'm not gonna pretend like it's not yeah. a shame. But, but you have time, an next generation like, to go back to. You always have that, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, the one that I could have seen it happening though, but not necessarily for that reason, I was pretty dang nervous when Netflix announced that they were gonna animate Bone, and I was mm -hmm. like they better do it right specific not necessarily specifically because i love because like i have the comics and stuff like that i can always go back and read them, right but i do believe bone absolutely believes or i'm sorry absolutely deserves to be animated and properly done that story deserves to have a proper adaptation so if they screw it up then it's like what are you doing? You know, so so I could have seen that happening. They canceled it. Maybe that's for the best. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's so, not the first so, time that's happened. If no, I remember, I, I, it's been yeah, it's been pitched as an animated series many times, and mm -hmm. it just Most never gets films. there. Yeah, yeah. And unfortunately, Jeff, I feel bad for Jeff Smith, the creator. Like he's really tried to make it happen. And in fact, he actually back um, in the mid two thousands, he pitched it to Nickelodeon. And it actually fell through because they wanted to turn it into something like the music and crap. He's like, no, like, don't do that. Just do the story. And they're like, not, mm -hmm. we're not going to deal with you. And he's like, okay, fine, whatever. Um, yeah. Got dropped by Warner Brothers before that. So it, it's happened three times now. So I feel bad for the I guy. So. Like, it, it really deserves to be animated and properly done. But who's going to do it, right? Who's going to do it right, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and so, not wrong. Yeah, and so I mean, there was the same thing, like the help the me get there, I'll do it. 
<laughs> I'll do it. I would love to. Have, man, I would love to work on a bone animated series. Well, well I guess probably before I I want to animate my Jisadai series eventually, mm -hmm. uh, which is why I'm doing the manga version of it. And if I can get that off the ground, and it you know it takes off in any way, <laughs> yeah, I know. It, but if it takes off in any way, I will will happily reach out. I mm -hmm. I just I just want like and it, it, one of you guys is going to make an it. awesome animated film one day, <laughs> and I just want to be some idiot Irish guy in the corner that does a voice overacting for you. That's what I want to do. <laughs> I'm not because I can do, the, do it right. It depends on the. It depends on where you're pulling from. You and I are gonna have to get drunk before you go on, you know, camera <laughs> in front of the mic. I can make that happen. <laughs> I don't know. I'll get, I'll get I'll get drunk with you and do the Irish thing. If you come over to the barbecue, his yeah. <laughs> backed out. You bunch of pansies. I didn't back out. I, I, say, That's, I, I didn't back out because I never backed in. So you know. It's, it's... <laughs> Yeah, Richard I was, I was, I was, I was a flake from the beginning. Let it, let it be known. <laughs> oh God! I was like, say, say when, and I'll fly out. But you know, Richard was like, mm. well, it's true, it's true. Richard's August. a buzzkill. It seems, this seems like a bad buzzkill. Well, I was thinking more like, like, like a Labor Day weekend thing, like a long weekend thing. It's, it's just that I'll talk with you guys about <laughs> some things. I'm. Smoke is almost chats, done. Right? <laughs> we do, we do, we do. Um, however, however, ladies and gentlemen, I gotta go use the bathroom again. I'll be back. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I Super when you drink cool. as much as I do, that's why you don't <laughs> break the seal until the show's over. <laughs> okay, that's called pain, good sir. We're not doing that. We're be not a man. It. I'm not 18 anymore. I don't. <laughs> No, I don't. I ain't got nothing to prove, dude. Dude, a after you've had a baby diaper explode on you, you realize, wow, I have nothing to prove to anybody else in my life right now. <laughs> For all the dads out there who <laughs> you thought the baby was done and there was that, yeah. This is oh, this is this is this is. I have nothing great content. My I have nothing to prove to you people. That's where I'm going with this. <laughs> I'll be back. Go to the bathroom, please. <laughs> Why do you got to say it like that? What? what? Uh, just <laughs> I'm. I'm going to start reading super chats if you're not. Careful. No, you can do. I. I'm. Dude, I'm half delusional. It's so okay. Four. Okay, full transparency. <laughs> hella, hella stressful week at work. Not because of my job, but because of ex <laughs> external things like it, just a part of my job. J and I, I am mentally tapped because of everything that I have had to do, the documentation I have had to track down, provide numbers I've had to crunch, like conversations I have had uh, with multiple government agencies. Like it, it's just, it's, it's just been a week. And so I am, I, I do my best to provide our guests with the the best interviews that I possibly can. Uh, tonight is one of those nights where I'm very, very glad to have Daniel and Richard here because of everything going on. It's one of those things where the brain's like, you know, dude, you should just shut down. And I'm like, but brain, I, I, I have things to do. And then the brain's like, eh, we're going to start powering down. And they pull that big old lever, that, you know, the big old nuclear reactor lever. And I'm just like, stop it. And the brain's just like, yeah, we're getting there. But yeah, it's it, it really has been one of those weeks that's just, oh, God. Daniel, how are you still a full hand above the? Because you told me I had to stay close to the microphone. Oh yeah, I did actually. Yeah, it, it's a it, that is the fifty-seven. Mm -hmm. You you yeah you got you want to be close. It sounds good though. Thank you. Yeah, I actually told people they're like Royce, why don't you use the fifty-seven? I'm like, because I I bought a microphone that's like four times as expensive as that one. 
But All of my willpower is going to sitting upright. It's awesome. All right, guys, I will be right back. I do have to use the bathroom really quickly. Also, I'll probably check on the family to make sure everybody's good and make sure that the kids are behaving for the wife. I will be right back. You guys can ask whatever you questions you want to send in super chats if you want to. You're probably going to make fun of me. It's okay. Yes. Um, but yeah, so I'll be right back. I'm not. No, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. It's the more so, guys. It's the mental <laughs> qualities. Well, let's talk about how much we love it. No, you're not talking about that. You traitorous commie bastards. I'm sorry. Mint, mint ice cream is disgusting. John, can you just, you you're just wrong. Have to do it easy. Anyway, wrong, wrong, wrong. No, wrong, not wrong. Animated Moon, wrong, where are you on this wrong, discussion? Wrong, mint ice cream, wrong, yes, or no? yes or no? Um, I could go either way. Oh my what, god, what is wrong with you? That's dirtier you're than wrong. the yes. Yeah, you're I know it's, it's shameful. No, not wrong. Mint ice cream is disgusting. <laughs> all, is that all I eat is like pretzels and like the same three meals. I don't really. Care. <laughs> you say pretzels for three meals? Uh, almost, but uh, same three <laughs> meals and pretzels. <laughs> all right. I think Royce is far enough away from the microphone now that he's not still sitting at the desk. But is anybody else find it interrupt. disturbing that he immediately started talking about a diaper whenever he said he had to go to the bathroom? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I, he's I, thinking about me a, just a little bit. Yeah, maybe he's <clears> thinking <throat> about upgrading so he can make it through the stream. Yeah, he and, and then he then he proceeded to sit there as though it really wasn't that urgent after all. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> Number four. How do we go on from that? Uh, uh, that's the, uh, that's the on, question yeah. I'm gonna. <laughs> we go on the super chats. That's what we do. <laughs> there is, there. Or Royce can text <clears throat> us from the bathroom. Okay, what, let's read some super chats before he just decides to terminate the stream. <laughs> You'd All have right. to come back to the desk to do that. This wasn't a super chat, but I, I saved anyway because I, uh, I was, I was. Uh, this was also my favorite part, Guilty Gearhead. Um, whenever, uh, whenever he said it, it's mooning time, so always good. And then uh, Maji Chan uh, also loves being mooned. So we got we got a lot of uh, uh, fans of of uh, mooning around here. So that's, oh, that's good for you. I'm not gonna say, sure if you if you like being mooned, you should that. check out his live streams on his uh, YouTube channel. Let me yeah. let me get the 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 link here. So aside from mooning people, what do you do on your live streams? Can you tell us just a little bit? You you well, draw, uh, you, you you play some excellent music. I assume he oh, animates apparently. things. Yeah, yeah. Well, you would be surprised. <laughs> so, so primarily, I, I've been working on the comics so much that that's been the primary thing that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. um, I did last time, I, I started working on an animatic um, uh, slash storyboarding for a, a little idea I have. I'll probably do that, I'll start doing that a little bit more. Um, and then before that, I actually did um, Evelay's piece, the, the black and white piece. So I do a, just a lot of mm -hmm. art stuff. I would, I would like to do some game stuff for the fun of it. Uh, Oh, yeah. Oh, that would um, be cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, kind of on the back. Would you be as interested well as... in doing a, uh, illustrating for a card game? Uh, just a, a short number of something like 26, 22 cards, something like that. Anyway, never mind. Um, potentially. Maybe. <laughs> it may be. It would, it would, uh, we would have to talk about it. Yeah. Yeah. But um, that would be a lot of work. But, um, Let's see. Um, the other thing I really want to get into is obviously you can see like got all this, you know, uh, music stuff behind me. And this is actually technically like mentally been, unstable. Well, that goes without saying, but um, no, I was talking the, about Royce, but oh, OK, <laughs> but um, the, the big thing that I want to do is like this whole thing is actually set up to run. Uh oh. Don't break don't anything. Pull, yeah, just say, don't, don't pull a Royce on us here. <laughs> oh, okay. so it'll be fine. But it's um, a Game it's Boy. Actually, you could throw it off of a highway; it'd be fine. You could. But uh, the, this whole music setup, with the exception of the organ itself, is actually meant to run off of this, so, um, so I can do it live, basically, um, via MIDI. Um, so I would love to get into that um, for live streams and stuff like that. But again, I have to tear down the board. So unfortunately, I was going to do that like last month, but. Mm -hmm. 
not gonna happen <laughs> for a bit. Um, so it might be a little while before I do that. And I, I have to like plan how I'm gonna do it. But um, yeah, so that's kind of, I guess my streams are just kind of just whatever, honestly. And that's kind of goes for my channel. Just there's a lot I wanna do. Mm -hmm. um, and um, my my hope is that like, it'll always kind of have a through line of like, my fingerprints on it and and people can really appreciate that because i don't want to just do the blind king forever yeah. right it's it's a it's a temporary project it's it's going to be gone next couple of years hopefully i'll, I'll be able to be <laughs> yeah hopefully project up. hopefully <laughs> um and move on to other things i got a lot of other stories i want to get to and um make happen and um so <laughs> um yeah well that's the way it goes right you just need more um, time. <laughs> honestly, yeah. Like I need more energy is what I need. I have a lot of time. I just I've been really lethargic as of late. Maybe it's all those life. pretzels. I'm not I'm I don't wanna, you know. It might be it might also be the fact that I'm missing much an organ, of... but you know. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> but um uh that's a whole other story. Um but um just slide yeah, down so... in there and move on. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta get it in there somewhere. Um <laughs> but um yeah that's um yeah I, I do a lot of a lot of stuff a lot of variety and just I, I like to explore things i like to just and share it i love sharing stuff <laughs> welcome back hey royce how's it going didn't leave the Good chat yeah watch the chat <laughs> still talking about mint ice cream it's <laughs> disgusting all of you people are gross you uh doing okay however, man Hey, no, I, no I'm mentally, I am mentally tapped. I like. I was like, gonna say, you were in the bathroom for a minute. No, no, I was getting bread. I hey. was, I was, I was frantically looking for food because I didn't eat food before I started this. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm not when, professional, people. I just, like. I've had a bagel today. <laughs> I should probably eat more food. I, I unfortunately, <laughs> I've uh, so been there. <laughs> I mean, it's like, what did I eat yesterday? Oh. <laughs> I tend to exist yeah. on hot wings and ramen, so. Hey, I make mean ramen, actually. I'm, actually, I, I'm probably going to be cooking ramen tonight. Mm. Um, Drunk good. ramen is the best ramen. If my I make homemade ramen. Ooh. Proper ramen. Mm -hmm. If my wife didn't stop me from, like, just, just, just moving in the directions that I move, I probably wouldn't eat. She'll yell at me. She's like, hey! I'm like, what? She's like, come here, eat now. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should probably do that. Honestly, that's what I <laughs> Wives are good like that. Yeah, they, they are. They kind of want you to survive. Mm-hmm. Hurry up. When I can. All right. I, I think we got one super chat let, left here from the Ultimate Kahuna. Uh-oh. I'll, I'll take this one while you eat your bread there. Get your your one meal a day in. Um, oh, man. <laughs> the, the last time I heard people say positive, say something positive, I was at the doctor's office. We need to collaborate and become better. Iron Age thrive will thrive with <laughs> collaboration. So really, Conan. <laughs> you know, fortunately, you know, if you're if you're in California, it's no big deal now. But. <laughs> Okay. That's the second <laughs> time I've heard that joke tonight. <laughs> oh, really? Uh, I was listening to Friday Night Tights earlier, and oh, they made oh. a very, very similar joke. <laughs> but it's not uh, not exactly that original, so, you know. No, but it's still funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's still funny that you heard it twice. <laughs> uh. Oh, man. So... I, I, and I know because uh, Richard has probably already shared the links in the chat, but Andrew, sure. Animated Moon, where can we find you? What are you doing? How are you doing? And so on. Well, the most active stuff I'm on is on YouTube. I stream, try to stream every week. Every now and again, I'll, I'll take a break. But um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, 6 p.m. is kind of the standard time. Um, every now and again, I'll deviate from that. Usually I try to announce it or um but that's the place to find me if you want to chat with me if you want to like uh see what i'm up to um what i'm working on if you want to see my work 
uh, past work and where everything lands. That's my website, theanimatedmoon.com. Um, I really want to like, I got to get more stuff going so that people can like <laughs> be more involved and stuff like that. Um, I love the people in this movement because they're like, no, I got to do more. I work like, you know, 19 hours a day on everything and I only sleep for like, you know, I only sleep for like five hours a day, but I got to do more. I love nah, the people see, in this movement. That's the thing. I, I, I have a lot of downtime. Like I said, I've been really lethargic as of late. So I've got to like, I got to like, Get back into working out. Stuff, get don't tell them that. Don't don't, <laughs> don't tell them that. Shh, don't do that. Do more stuff. But yeah, there's Let's lots see. to do. Um, I'm looking forward to what's coming down the pipeline. Um, there's a, man. I'm, there's some projects I'm really excited about. Um, hopefully, starting. Actually, I picked up a tripod not too long ago that I'm looking forward to putting to good use. Maybe not this year, but but in the future, it'll it'll definitely be used for a project. Um, I... Okay. <laughs> Keep your so, secrets. Well, I'll, I'll give you a little bit of a hint. You, you, I mentioned um, some of my inspirations being things like um, Twilight Zone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if you run on that line of thinking, um, that that gives you a good idea of what I've got in mind for something. In the future so I'm he's gonna be doing some it, it you need to touch base with uh christopher moonlight hmm? you need fellow to touch moon? base with huh yes. fellow moon see yeah. christopher <laughs> coxie you need to touch base with him because you he busy I, making badass sci-fi i dude i am waiting for that he's getting close though right well, I mean, he's definitely making major progress. I don't know how close he is to finish yet. Though. I don't like you and your you and your writer bullshit. You're like, well, <laughs> making progress, but I'm not close. What the fuck I is know even how the that? Works, man. <sighs> yeah, Daniel, I mean, that's a big project. It's going to take a little while. It is. It actually is. Yep. Um, I'm. Almost hoping he gets ready for release around the one year date that we had him on the show. Cause that would just be very poetic. And if we could schedule it around the one year date that we had him on the show, I'm uh, that'd like be great. Two, but yeah. <laughs> Might be. I mean, he's making incredible progress. I'm not dude, saying you got you're just practically so doing it himself. I know you guys are just <laughs> negative. It's not negative. Nancy's. <laughs> go back to the bathroom, Royce. I I had to go get bread too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you guys picking on me, <laughs> Daniel? Daniel, where can we find you? What are you up to, good sir? At whimsyland.org you know the thing at the bottom of the screen that's where you can find me or you can find me on twitter at mr dp riley Same. my dms are open you can ask me questions talk to me about stuff i do have um coaching spots open if anybody's interested i am booked up for the month of august and possibly september as far as editing is concerned but if you don't mind waiting i'll be happy to do some work for you come november and december just reach out that's awesome um richard i so, i want to i, I want to ask well, what you're up to but I, I i have a feeling i have a feeling what you're up to rhymes with anvil and also with schmamville <laughs> fuck oh, no. <laughs> Actually, speaking of rhymes, I, I did, I did, uh, <laughs> did grace everyone with a terrible limerick. So, oh, no. go ahead, do it. Uh, do limerick. Hold on, I'm, I'm, I need to remember what it was precisely. Is this one of those where your just wife looks at you and just is like, "I can't believe you did this"? Is it one of those, yeah. or is it not that bad? Oh, it's not that bad. No, oh, somebody, somebody posted a ramble. Anyway, it was. Uh, let's see here. There once was an editor named Daniel with locks like a cocker spaniel, giving <laughs> novels a stare while he sat on his chair, wishing they'd read a damn manual. <laughs> so that's that's my uh, that's my contribution. There's my poetic uh, Richard's creative side. Yeah, that's that's my creative side. 
<laughs> and deep within his gut, he let out a big groan. <laughs> uh, that's what I like about limericks. That's it. They're done. Yeah, it's over. It's great. So. <laughs> and then I could write in, you could write in Dr. Dr. Seuss story off of that. I initially wasn't <laughs> sure how I should react to locks like a cocker spaniel. <laughs> the cocker spaniels are they're very popular in dog shows because they have such they nice, are, that's nice true. coats. That's so, true. You know. And they do have a resplendent mane. <laughs> I mean I mean you know, it's not <laughs> Oh I man, I have funny. not heard resplendent <laughs> in a long time. Uh, you're on a oh. panel with a writer, man. You're gonna hear words. <laughs> you're gonna hear words. Oh god. All right, but yeah, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 all I got. Anvil magazine, <laughs> the trailer's out. Uh Mr. Uh Kulta did a, a fantastic trailer there. Evely mm -hmm. did a hilarious unboxing video that I'm probably going to use as an ad. That was amazing. And, that uh, was amazing. Yeah, things are things are moving right along. As always, there's IronAge.media, prompts, articles. Um, old uh, TJ Marquis has a new uh, video series called Indie Scan that I'm going to start highlighting on Mondays. So if you aren't already right. subscribed to his channel or you don't want to watch there, you can check it out on uh, Iron Age Media. So that's all the news. Chill stream Sunday. I don't know. What else? Follow Anvil Magazine. Yes, go. Give me your money. Second time <laughs> I've had to remind him to do yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I did you, drop the you, link. Anvil Magazine. Do it for other people, but you won't do it for you. You're like You're damn you, right. It's kind of gay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. <laughs> oh really? my god before yes really yes and before this gets out of hand ladies and gentlemen thank you all so much for being here in iron age nights oh man oh and by the way tomorrow night here on the channel uh it's been a while but we're gonna be back with uh star shatter so for those of you who are interested in the star shatter tabletop we've got to fight some ghosts tomorrow it's I'm gonna be go. awesome yeah, ghosts. That's where we left off. And I still want my ship, and Black Knight won't give me my ship, and I don't know why. Give the fake Irishman his ship, Black Knight. I just want the ship, and he won't let me have it. I'm trying to so or the cosmos being gay. Okay, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness, Lord. <coughs> oh man, it has been absolutely fantastic. Animated Moon, seriously, dude, thank you so much. Man, I, I love having people on the show as passionate as you are. Like, hey, well, that's what I do. It, it, it's, it's nice. Because sometimes you get people that are like, here's my shill, I'm out. And you're just like, ah, you didn't <laughs> do that. No, I love talking about I love, I love the trying use to of retro gear. Oh, yeah. You gotta, you gotta have fun with it, you know? <laughs> you got to. Oh, no, absolutely. You're gonna, yeah, you managed to geek out with uh, both Royce and myself. Yeah. I know. Oh, yeah. That's weird. That doesn't have. Oh. Oh, God. The universe is collapsing. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. And we will see you all next time. Cheers, everybody. Good night, everybody. Good night. Night.